This is Stacia, and I've been looking at the Petrov defense, or the Russian game, as it is also called. Um, because, so, I'm a D4 player, <laughs> I must admit. I avoid E4, and but I want to work to change that eventually. So, I'm looking at, I thought maybe a good way to start would be to build a repertoire against the double king pawn or play the double king pawn and have a repertoire. So, all right, so I've, I'm playing e4, e5, and the main move by far is knight f3 here. In fact, it's played 93% of the time. So it seems like a good place to start building my repertoire. And in this position, uh, black has three main options. Of course, there's more than that. But you can play basically the main line with knight c6. And this leads into your Roy Lopez's and Berlin's and Italian games, um, which is very heavy in theory. And I'm not really attracted to this for some reason. Um, so if you look at the next line, it's actually knight f6. And this is the Petrov defense or Russian game. So this is more appealing to me. This, I guess it has a reputation for being a little drawish, although the, the Petrov players are really adamant that it is in fact not drawish, but the stats are pretty drawish, let's be, uh, let's be honest. Um, but I am a Slav exchange player, which is also a very drawish line, and I get some very interesting positional games out of it that I can usually... I usually score well on, and then I also know ways to make it dynamic if I'd like. I kind of want to do that with this Petrov defense as well. So if anyone is a Petrov player or knows more about this opening, I would sure appreciate feedback as I look closer at this. All right, so anyways, so we get to the Petrov after knight f6, and now white has options on how to play this. All right, there's actually five book lines here. Um, the main line by far is knight takes e5. And yeah, when I first looked at this, I'm like, what the frick? Why would you allow this? But you know, white doesn't get to keep this pawn, so not to worry. Um, and black has options here. Whoops, sorry. Messed up. Yeah, I don't know where, why this is doing this to me. All right. And there are some traps that you have to watch out for, although I'm not interested in going over those in this particular video. All right, so, um, yeah, I just want to, like, learn the main moves and learn the main line for the most part to start with this. All right, so knight takes e5 is by far the main move, and... The computer says it's it's the strong it's the most precise move as well. Um, now there's also the move d4, and this is the Steinitz attack. Um, and I don't know much about this, but certainly I'll want to uh, look at this closer in the future. And then um, the other move that I should look for is this knight c3 move. And this is called the three knights game, and from what I understand, black should play knight c6 here, and you end up in a four knights game. So again, this is like pretty much a totally different opening, and I don't know much about it, but it is something that I'll probably want to study, um, because the Petrov may lead to this. It may transpose, is the way I understand it. All right, so if I'm wrong about that, definitely let me know in the comment section. But that's that's what it looks like to me. All right, so um, all right, so let's continue with the main line. All right, so knight takes e5, and yeah, it is possible to grab this pawn on e4, um, but the, it's a it's a rare line, and I think it gets a little bit crazy. And there's trap there's a trap for black and not white really. So from what I understand. The main move by far here is d6, and this continuation is sort of forced. All right, black has some crazy options like um, 
black can actually or white can actually take here and this is called the Co Cochrane Gambit but the computer says black's pretty much better after this it's not a completely sound gambit um, and then you also have like knight c4 and this is called the Paulson attack um, but again the computer says the black's even slightly better after this move so I don't know in my opinion it seems like knight f3 is pretty much the only respectable way to continue the other moves might be good for blitz but you're not going to want to play that way all right and I don't know why this computer is acting so weird all right because I have a line for this all right so yeah interestingly enough white simply retreats the knight the knight seriously just belongs on f3 and now um, 100 percent of the time black takes according to the book so you, like I said you get that pawn back and I you have this nice uh, knight here so again we are at a crossroads where white has some choices as to how to continue the game the main line played 61 percent of the time is d4 and this is the classical variation of the Russian game and it goes on from here so white just taking the center um, the other way to play it is queen e2 is a move, and this is the Cozio Lasker variation. I don't know much about this, but of course you're they're pinning the knight to the king. And then black has to respond with queen e7. But we'll look at that another time. And then the last move to be aware of is knight c3. And I did watch a video uh, on uh, by I am, I am John Bartholomew because he likes this line for white. Um, one thing I want to say about these moves is that after the knight retakes the pawn here, um, the computer actually says d4 is basically the strongest of these moves and that d3 is not a bad move either. Um, but knight c3 and queen e2 both um, look really pretty equal. It gives white like a plus 0.1 advantage at that point. But the point of knight c3, I guess, which, okay, I already have this line. I don't know why it does this. All right, so the point of this is that after black takes and takes with the uh, d pawn, um, white intends to castle queenside and create a very dynamic type type game where where there's opposite side castling and, and pretty much a race to checkmate. So there's that. Black does have the option to castle queenside in these lines though and keep it more boring, I guess, <laughs> which is the way I like to play. Uh, at least for now until my tactics sharpen up. All right, so we're almost done here. Um, so let's get back. Um, so Petrov, this is just the, the main line. So d6, the knight goes back, we grab the pawn, and d4 is played. All right, so d4 does leave the knight here for the time being. And now black wants to play d5. It looks weird to move your pawn again, but this is just simply the best move. It cements the knight on this great square, um, and it also opens up scope for the bishop. And uh, it also grabs, you know, it, it, it puts your pawn in the center. So, yeah, it's just best to play d5 here. And, in fact, um, there are some other moves, but d5 is by far the main move. All right, and then just to wrap up, uh, white responds with bishop g3 here 100% of the time. And then... Black has a lot of options, although I intend to just stay with the main line um, until I get some experience in this line. Um, so black plays knight c6, which just looks like a developing move to me. And then white would castle. Black puts their bishop on e7, just preparing to castle. Yeah, I don't think... I think maybe... Maybe d3 is an option, but these other squares don't look tempting at all. I just want to see if it is a move. The other way to play this is bishop g4, which is what I did in, my, in a blitz game where I tried this opening. I did win that game, 
So that's pretty cool. But bishop b7 is the main move. Okay, and then white plays c4. And yeah, I don't really know how to proceed from here, but I think this is, you know, who knows if I will reach this position. There's a lot of variations uh, for now to consider. And then the way I typically learn an opening is I just play it in three minute games and uh, see what I get, you know, see what my opponents play, get a feel for the opening, get a feel for what I like and don't like about it. And um, so I've managed to play it twice so far and one was a win and one was a loss. So, but so far, I think I really like this opening a lot. Um, so I, I'm, for now, I'm intending to add it to my repertoire. Um, feels like a good choice for me. And um, we'll go from there. And thanks so much for watching.